Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Salt Biscuit. It is currently 1.30 a.m. in Las Vegas, Nevada. I decided to spend a couple more days here just to get my voice back in order. As you can probably hear, it's just a tad croaky. It was a lot worse this morning. I've just got done casting the IPL 5 tournament in Vegas, which was a four-day long event, and is my last live event for probably the next few months, I would think. So I decided to put a vlog together just to update you on the situation and what's going to be going on over the next few weeks and indeed months. So the first thing to say is thank you very much to all of you who have contributed so far to the fundraising effort that we're putting forward for Odie. Now, if you don't know who Odie is, he is the manager of Team Dignitas, which is a UK-based pro gaming team and esports organization. He manages several teams, including StarCraft 2, League of Legends, Dota 2, Shoot Mania. There's even FIFA players on that squad. It's it's a pretty big family, honestly. But as with all esports teams, you certainly don't get into that to make money. It's a pretty foolish thing. Indeed, as we found out when we started our esports team, it's actually a gigantic money sink. And it's not somewhere you go to make a huge profit. This guy's been running this passion project essentially out of his gas. Yeah, that's where his office is for the last nine years. Those guys actually founded a Battlefield 1942 clan, essentially, and then it was registered as an official company in 2004. So he's been doing this for a long, long time, and he's very passionate indeed. It's, of course, the team that my co-commentator, Diapolo, comes from, and I've got a really good relationship with those guys. So when I found out that Odie's house had taken severe fire damage and that essentially his kids had pretty much lost everything, either it had burned up completely in the fire or it had been contaminated by soot and carcinogenic, so it was essentially toxic and would have to be thrown away, it was pretty heartbreaking because it was... Only so long ago that I was actually welcomed into that house and I did stay there and I was casting tournaments from there and his family made me feel very welcome indeed and well now that house is at least half destroyed and hopefully we'll be in a position where they'll actually be able to repair it rather than abandon it entirely but that's going to take months of work and a huge amount of expense to replace what was lost and repair what is currently there and make it safe and habitable again and you guys came out in fine style to help out with that. You guys are incredible. Everyone that's come out to support, whether it be from the StarCraft 2 community, the League of Legends community, Dota 2, even the old Battlefield clans coming in to help out a guy that's really made a big mark on esports and is always humble, is always honest and forthright and always just a stand-up individual that you really want to sit down, have a beer with and talk about the world. You guys have done really, really well by him, so thank you very much for that. And the fundraiser will continue essentially until we feel that it's best to stop it. This is designed to replace the stuff that was lost. They were estimating $16,000 worth in damage to possessions alone. No idea about structural damage to the house as of yet. And as any of you who've actually had to experience making an insurance claim know, insurance is really not the magic fix-all solution. I recall the last time I had to make an insurance claim it was actually on a car. We totaled it because we were caught in a flash flood and we hydroplaned off the road, flipped the car three times, and the whole thing was completely destroyed. So did they, of course, replace it with a brand new vehicle? Well, of course not. No. That's not what they did at all. It was even ruled as no fault, but what they essentially did was pay off the rest of the car, and that was it. So the money that we paid under the car, irrelevant. That's gone. Do we get a down payment on the next vehicle? No. So that's insurance in a nutshell for you. It is not, in fact, magical pixie dust. It does not replace everything, and it's certainly not, by no means quick. It took a very, very long time indeed to get that sorted out, and that was just a car payment. So Lord knows what's going to be happening with structural damage assessments and all manner of different things there. And more to the point, you know, this is the real point here. And some people come out and say, oh, well, you'll get the money back, so why are you raising money? Because last time I checked, this is December, you know what that is, right? Yeah, that's Christmas. And the last thing I want is for his entire family to either go and live in a bed and breakfast or be crammed into one room and all their possessions essentially destroyed. I mean, God's sake, all the kids' clothes had to be thrown away. They, they can't be used anymore. They're contaminated with soot and toxins and all manner of crap, assuming they didn't burn up in the first place. We're not talking about some wealthy multimillionaire here. I forgot to say, he owns an esports team. 
That's what he does. It's not a very profitable enterprise. If you're in this industry, you are in it because you love it and because you are passionate about it. Nobody deserves to have that kind of thing happen, no question, and especially coming up to Christmas. That is absolutely crushing. The point of the fundraiser is essentially to allow them to have a proper Christmas. And yes, of course, there are people worse off. There's the old adage. When you think that everything is going horribly wrong, then just consider, you know what, I could be a Darfur war orphan. And yes, you could be a Darfur war orphan. But at the end of the day, we're also talking about a video gaming community. We're not talking about the third world. I would like to point out, of course, that over this past year, we have raised in total around $78,000 for Charity Water, which will set up a huge number of clean water projects in many villages across the third world. And as a result of that, we've dealt with pretty much a year of BS. But fuck it, let's just call it bullshit, because that's actually what it is. There are people that don't believe in charity at all. And that's cool. That's fine. But charity is one of the most personal things you can do, I feel. When you give money selflessly to an organization or an individual, you do it for very, very personal reasons, because you believe that it is the right thing to do. And those personal reasons, as far as I am concerned, are completely and totally sacred. They are inalienable. You can give for whatever reason to whoever you choose, and nobody should have the right to criticize you for that. Now, the reason behind that is that if they did, and we had a culture whereby people were shouting at you every time you gave money to a cause that they didn't believe was worthwhile, then essentially no one would bother with charity anymore. There is always someone worse off. Oh, I give money to a children's hospice? There are guys dying of other diseases in the third world. But what about them? Oh, it's, oh, it's only adults dying of th diseases in the third world? What about giving to this hospital that's trying to save victims of landmines, children, babies? You see where this goes? It goes to a really ugly, stupid place. The last thing we should be doing is debating about charity. If someone chooses not to give to charity, that's totally cool. At the end of the day, we all have limited funds. Some are worse off than others. Hell, some of these people actually deserve charity of their own. But I cannot abide a culture where charity is consistently questioned. The amount of nonsense we had during the King of the Web and the Battle Royale campaign in order to raise so much money for these wells in Africa was beyond belief. I mean, I wasn't necessarily surprised because I've been on the internet for a long, long time and I've experienced probably the worst it has to offer as well as some of the best that it has to offer. So it doesn't surprise me when people act like dicks on the internet, but it's almost like there's this consistent culture underneath the surface whereby there's a certain generation of people that were not brought up with the idea that charity is good. They were brought up with the idea that charity is corrupt, they have this very cynical view of things. I know that sounds rich coming from me, right? But one of the things that I was told when I grew up was that helping others, if you had the ability to do so, was one of the best things you could possibly do. And it didn't matter how you helped them, it didn't matter if it was one dollar, a thousand dollars, a million dollars. It didn't matter if it was a homeless guy on the street. It didn't matter if it was an animal hospital, a third world country. As long as you did what you could, then nobody could possibly ask any more of you. And if you have a culture where people are willing to help each other in that scenario, not really ask for anything in return, then you have a really great society. Unfortunately, and fortunately, the two sides of this coin, we are on the internet where you can post whatever you like. And some of those opinions can be absolutely wonderful. You can say whatever you want. Unfortunately, that often results in some really stupid things being said. Some idiotic philosophy from teenagers. People just going into college believing that they understand the entire world and they are supreme when it comes to logic and reason. Even people that believe they are above others simply because they refuse to give to charity, or vice versa, that they believe they're above others because they give to charity, and they go and condemn others that either can't afford it or simply don't want to do it. And you know what it does? It degenerates into a huge, horrible hissy fit, a pissing contest between people. In a way that helps absolutely no one. You know, this is not any intelligent debate, and when we had the comments enabled on that video, it was, it was nonsensical. I mean, you don't go to someone's video where the person very well might be reading the comments, because, of course, it's his video. It says, you know, help this guy because his house burned down, and say, oh, I don't care about you, you know, or there are other more important things, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's great. If you choose not to donate, entirely your right and privilege, but for God's sake, keep it to yourself. I mean, 
it is about common decency, really. And I've always believed that since I'm now in a privileged position where I'm making good money and I also have an audience, it's kind of my duty to make use of that in a positive way, whether it be promoting good Kickstarters, whether or not it be helping out indie developers, whether or not it be raising awareness for various causes in the industry or indeed raising money for charity, which is why we went on such a big drive over the past 12 months for Charity Water. It's also why we backed the Yogscast campaign for goats last year and will no doubt be backing the bees campaign this year because it is doing good. And it doesn't matter how much good you do. It just matters that you are trying, that you are doing something to make the world just a little bit brighter. And I, you know what, I like to think that most gamers understand that. We came from humble beginnings. But we also came from the notion that video games allowed us to be the hero. It allowed us to battle evil. It allowed us to bring light to dark places and expunge the wrongs of the world. And I think that is a really healthy attitude. It's a very forward-looking attitude. It's a very optimistic. It's a very brave and proactive attitude that can really transfer to different things, including, of course, charity work. Gamers raise so much money for charity every year in a wide variety of different ways, and this nasty little undercurrent underneath it from the vocal minority is just unhelpful. I mean, n you're not impressing anybody. And quite frankly, when I hear things like you're exploiting your fan base or anything like that, I just have to roll my eyes. I mean, how unbelievably amorally disgusting must you have to be to come onto the internet and essentially go out of your way to say that and actually attack people that are trying to help each other out. I don't know. It, it, I would say it's depressing, but I've seen it so much now that honestly, it's just noise. That's really all that it is. I'll continue to promote charitable causes when I feel it's worthwhile to do so. And whether or not it be a grand thing like building a ton of wells across Africa, which we've done this year, or whether it be just about helping a friend, helping someone that's really done a lot for the pro gaming scene and is a stand-up individual and had a really tragic thing happen to him and he certainly didn't deserve it. It doesn't matter how big or small a charitable effort is, just that you're trying to do something to make everything better. And hey, the proof of the pudding is of course in the money pot, is it not? You can't argue with numbers, you can't argue with facts. It's right there and it says, we as a gaming community support and try and help our fellow gamers when possible. And the vocal minority can go fuck itself. You'll have to forgive me if I don't find the importance of people expressing their opinion to be too much of a factor in this. Yay, you expressed your opinion on a YouTube comment. Forever will nobody give a damn. There are times when feedback is very valuable. There are times when constructive and hell, even sometimes offensive criticism, can actually be useful to a channel, useful to the guy making the videos, and it can cause improvements. And then there are times when criticism is absolutely worthless. And this, of course, would be one of those times indeed. Support the things that you believe in, ignore the things that you don't, and you will have a lot more free time to play video games and a lot fewer headaches, as will we all. All right, well, I felt I had to get that off my chest, so let me tell you about a few other things. This will probably make a lot of people on the main channel pretty happy, but we'll see. I am going to step back from StarCraft II casting for Wings of Liberty, at least for the next few months. It is actually a pretty quiet set of months anyway, so it's not a really difficult step to take. But it's gotten to the point now where I'm seeing some... Rather heartbreaking things within my favorite competitive video game, StarCraft 2. I'm seeing balance issues that I don't like. I'm seeing matchups that I don't like. I'm seeing people lose when they deserve to win. And I'm seeing a matchup that I don't enjoy casting going to the eighth game of a best of eight series and having to cast the same builds over and over again. And I've always said that if I got sick of StarCraft 2, I would stop casting it because it was a passion project and it was something I was very enthusiastic about. I don't make money from it, really. I actually make a loss, as you're well aware, because I'm not producing content on a regular basis while I'm at a tournament. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to be focusing on some Heart of the Swarm stuff and looking at the development of the new expansion, hopefully casting some replays and show matches, but aside from that, I expect to be in the office, in the studio, working regular schedule for at least the next couple of months. I think the next event we're planning on being at is probably PAX East, and it's looking very likely that we will be there in some capacity. Aside from that, though, things are going to be pretty quiet. And that's probably a good thing, is it not? Yep, yeah, 
you guys want that. That's what you want me to do, and that is, quite frankly, what you come to see. So, as far as I'm concerned, I should be doing that. As much as I would have liked to bring you content patch while I was here, things were a little bit crazy, and I should never promise that I can work during an event, because more often than not, I can't, and all sorts of different things happen. But hopefully you enjoyed the content I prepared for you, including the chivalry stuff, the two great interviews, as well as... WTF am I doing flying? Oh god, that was pretty bad. But I'll be back pretty soon. As I said, I'm taking one more day in Vegas just to get my head back in gear and make sure my voice is back up to full strength and then I can get back to work, which will be awesome. So for those of you wondering what's coming up in the channel, well, we are pretty much at the end of the year, which means that AAA releases are few and far between. Not actually seeing anything coming in the next few weeks on the AAA front that's even worth looking at. And Metro Last Light's gone to early 2013 now. And Company of Heroes 2 is going to be in 2013. There's, yeah, there's basically nothing. I mean, I might have another look at Air Buccaneers, but that's hardly what I call AAA. So... I'll be rounding up the year, finishing off all of the indies, maybe going back to some of the stuff that I didn't actually get a chance to really do, because I did miss quite a lot during this year as well. And then, of course, I'll be bringing you the regular top 10s as per usual on the channel, including the top 10 games that I most enjoyed. And there might be a few more. You know, we might do top 10 disappointments. You never know. Our top 10s always seem to get a lot of viewers, so we'll see how that one goes. And as regards to the content, I'm going to be getting back to Terraria, which will please a lot of you. And I may be looking into this whole Angry Joe thing, because it went down pretty well on the channel. I think we could collab a little bit more, maybe do some more Versus stuff. And... One other thing that I am looking into is actually setting up a little bit of a Dota 2 mini-series. It's been a game that I've been very interested in, and some of you might turn around and say, well, weren't you the guy that put out that ridiculous statement a while ago on the mailbox? And like, yep, that would be me. And yeah, you're right, it was probably a bit of a conspiracy theory, but it was an interesting mailbox, was it not? Made you think? Mm-hmm. Probably not 100% right, but then again, most things rarely are. And... As far as I'm concerned, I feel it's pretty important for League of Legends to have some really legitimate competition because the last thing you want is a dominant game in any scene. Yeah, that's bad. If you get competition, you breeds innovation and it breeds new features and great stuff and we want that. So I think dipping my toes into Dota 2 might be a possibility. There's a couple of very talented Dota 2 commentators, as you're probably aware, on TGS, including, of course, the one and only Purge. So we may be looking into some collab, perhaps a... Dota 2 noob team on TGS coached by one of the experts. That sounds like something worth having and something I'd very much like to see on the channel. So I'll be working towards that hopefully in the next couple of months. This has been a great year for the channel, honestly. It's been really, really good indeed. We've seen excellent growth across the board. We've seen publishers finally come around and say, yes, you can check out our AAA titles. And my God, has that paid off in spades. The Far Cry video is a runaway success. I haven't seen anything like it. It's incredible. Over half a million views in under a week. Wow. I mean, how on earth did that happen? I have to wonder. But hey, it did. And I guess that's all that really matters. So thank you very much for supporting that and actually watching the AAA videos. The Hitman video did really well. The Dishonored video did really well. And we also had great success with Sleeping Dogs. So as far as I'm concerned, devs, publishers, you might want to send me your game, right? Looking forward to powering forward in 2013 with yet more of the content that you actually like. Hopefully bringing improvements to Content Patch, tightening up that format, bringing back the viewer interaction in perhaps a different form. And we are also on our way to 850,000 subscribers and 320 million video views. That's pretty awesome. So thank you very much for supporting the channel. As always, you are a fantastic audience. My name has been Total Biscuit, just with a few thoughts on a variety of different topics. Thanks for watching this informal vlog for my hotel room in Las Vegas. I'll be back soon with regular content and I will see you next time.